Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Fighting Fantasy. This is book number 9, Caverns of the Snow Witch. Um, this book has no special rules, but we are going to still do something uh, differently here a bit. Um, <coughs> because of a bug in the game, unfortunately. So, as you can see, the way skill and uh, other attributes work, um, the maximum level, so the initial slash maximum level of their um, of uh, each attribute may be raised or lowered, obviously, um, due to ailments or, or items found. And um, it's not always uh, clear; it's it's it can be quite ambiguous when one should just uh, um, raise the current number or current amount, current stat, and when one should raise the initial stat. But uh, overall. The, the at least for the skill attribute the way it works is that if you find another item that adds a skill to your uh, stats then that is a permanent addition so um, I think that normally it works like this if you drink a potion or if you consume some consumable then it you normally uh, only raises your current uh, skill level however the items that you find like swords I don't know, sh helmets, shields, whatever, they raise your permanent, your initial or, or your, yeah, yeah, your permanent stat. However, in this version of the game book, there is a bug. Quite early in um, the game, we are going to find um, an item, an amulet, that is supposed to raise our skill level by two, but it doesn't do anything. Um, and Furthermore, later on, we're also going to find another item that is not going to raise our uh, stat uh, by one point, our skill stat, as it should. So what that means is that if we start out with the uh, 10 um, um, points in skill level, like uh, that is the maximum we can get on Hardcore Hero difficulty, this book becomes practically impossible to win. So we are not going to do that. Um, uh, instead, we are going to offset this bug by playing it on the regular difficulty level and that means that we are going to start out with 12 uh, skill uh, points, uh, so tw 12 points uh, at skill uh, stat and of course once we get the, that amulet we are back to where we are supposed to be uh, in the game. In effect this means that at the very beginning we are going to have a uh, a little bit of an advantage compared to a true hardcore hero difficulty. In the mid game we're going to be the same and uh, in the second half of the game we're still going to be lagging behind because of um, another item that's supposed to give a uh, one point to the skill level and which is not conferred in the game itself. So, um, so it's going to still be quite a tough going anyway. Alright, so because of this we need to roll uh, a perfect character um, stats so all our stats should be at maximum possible maximum level and we're going cho to choose adventurer uh, difficulty as i've mentioned now you might be saying that what about uh, the other difference uh, provisions right and well that is very easy um provisions um work the same way in on hard both adventure and hardcore hero difficulty the only difference is the number of provisions we get so on Hardcore Hero we start out with three units of provisions, so three portions. And in, uh, on Standard Difficulty level we start out with ten. And so what I'm going to do is immediately at the beginning of, uh, of our adventure, as soon as I can, I'm going to just consume or waste seven uh, of our provisions so that we are down to three. So that is not going to be uh, uh, different in any way. Um, so that we are truly playing through a hard you know, the difficulty level that, that we we mean to do. Alright, so this is going to take a while um, before I manage to roll um, all the stats to maximum. So I'll just make a cut here, right here, and I'll see when the character, when our character is, is generated with perfect stats. Alright, we have managed to roll an almost perfect character. Um, we roll the stamina of 23. I hope that will be enough. I hope we don't die with one stamina point loss. So um, that's what we're going to roll with. The other two stats were perfect. So we are start we start out with 
uh, skill stat of 12 and the uh, luck stat of 12 as well. Um, um, so everything is going according to plan. Let's choose a potion. And this time I'm going to choose a potion of strength. Uh, you don't need a potion of skill for this game. Um, as I've said, especially temporary uh, skill point um, boosts are very common. So to get back to the initial level. Um, I would like to take a, both a potion of fortune and a potion of strength with me, but I, I'm, I want to take the potion of strength for security reasons. Um, it is going to be a very tough going and uh, we might really have need this one, especially since we're only rolling with three uh, portions of provisions, so this is something we should count on. Uh, that means that of course our luck rolls need to get really lucky, unfortunately. Um, we need to perform a lot of luck rolls on this adventure. Uh, a lot of them, uh, I mean, we are going to get a lot of luck points back as well, fortunately. So uh, we we'll just have to do a balancing act like that. All right, let's take a look at our, uh, our equipment. We begin our adventure with a sword and dressed in leather armor. That's it. Um, no lanterns, no shields, no nothing. Um, so it's pretty bare bones. And we can take a look at our character. So as I've said, um, <coughs> we start out almost perfectly. We lack one post potential uh, stamina point plus. And right now I'm going to consume up to uh, o uh, s exactly seven provisions. I'm careful not to uh, drink my potion of strength here. Right, so this is how we're gonna mm, start out with, and I'm telling you, in, uh, like f uh, at the f in during the second or third video of this game, of this playlist, we are going to be back to where we should be uh, regarding the difficulty level. So this is all good. May the luck of the gods go with us on the adventure ahead. Yep, we're gonna need that. Winters in northern Alansia are always cruel and bitter. The snow falls thick and the icy wind blows hard, chilling everybody to the bone. For the past few weeks, we have been hired by a merchant called Big Jin's son to protect his trading caravans as they roll their way slowly north to the frozen outposts. The horse-drawn carts are laden with cloth, utensils, weapons, salted meats, spices and tea, which are traded for furs and ivory, carvings, made from mammoth's tusks. Big Jim is not usually worried about traveling north, as bandits only attack his caravans on the return journey. He is not alone in recognizing the value of the northern goods. On this particular trip, we are walking ahead of six carts across a frozen lake. In the distance we can see the snow-capped peaks of the Icefinger Mountains jutting out of low cloud clouds, probably. Our destination lies at the base of the mountains where the Northmen meet to trade. Snow is falling, but not too heavily. We stop to prod the ice with our sword to make sure it can bear the weight of the carts, when suddenly the shrill call of a hunting horn breaks the silence. We stand up and run back to the carts to talk to Big Jim. He is sitting next to the driver of the second cart, puffing on a long briar pipe. A huge man with a great bushy beard, Big Jim is obviously a man to be reckoned with. His bright blue eyes scan the horizon, searching for signs of life. Yep, that's him, alright. His pipe and he seems awfully calm about this whole business. So, let's see what he has to say. In a deep voice he says, Sounds like it came from the outpost. Reckon you better go and investigate, could be trouble. And get back quick. We set off straight away towards the outpost at the base of Icefinger Mountains. We arrive two hours later at a scene of ugly carnage. The snow is red with blood and all the wooden huts are smashed and torn down. Six people lie dead, their bodies slashed, their axes at their sides in the snow. Judging by the size of the footprints, the creature that attacked the outpost must have been enormous. There is nothing we can do for the unfortunate Northman, so we head back towards Big Jim's caravan to report the news. We reach them in an hour, just as the daylight is fading 
and relate the terrible event events that have befallen the outpost. Big Jim orders the carts to be drawn into a circle to protect his men during the night. A large fire is built into the center of the circle and we sit down beside it to talk to Big Jim. Everybody is nervous and the guard is posted to watch for signs of movement outside. In a low voice, Big Jim asks us if we will hunt down the terrible creature, for otherwise his business will be ruined forever. We smile and reply that we will track the beast, but only for a purse of 50 gold pieces. Big Jim's jaw drops open and it takes a great deal of persuasion before he agrees to our demand. The snow finally stops falling as we settle down for the night. Sleep is a long time coming, for our mind is active with thoughts of the impending hunt. When we wake just after dawn, the fire is reduced to dying embers. Wisps of smoke rise gently into the morning mist and not a sound is to be heard. We walk over to where Big Jim is sleeping and tap him on the shoulder. He wakes with a start and we tell him that we are setting off and hope to be back later in the day. We wave to the guard as the snow starts to fall again and we make our way back to the outpost. Alright, so it seems like we've got a nice little adventure. We need to hunt some kind of enormous beast and kill it for uh, the measly sum of 50 gold pieces. That doesn't sound like a, uh, like a very heroic adventure, but whatever. Uh, let's turn over. By the time we reach the outpost again, the bodies are blanketed with snow and the beast's footprints are covered over. Visibility is poor as we set off towards the mountains where we hope to find the abominable killer beast. The snow on the mountainside is soft and we sink in up to our knees as we climb slowly up. We soon find ourselves at the edge of a crevice which is spanned by an ice bridge. All right. So it seems like we are alone hunting that whatever it is, that huge beast, uh, in order to avenge the Northmen and to secure uh, the business of Big Jim's son. Both are quite decent deeds, I would say. And I'm going to make the cut of the video here, but not before placing a bookmark here, here so that I don't need to uh, reroll my character again. This is going to be the only bookmark we're going to use um, on this adventure. And uh, we take a deep breath and we are going to get start to get ready for, uh, for our real adventure coming up ahead. I'm pretty sure that hunting down this beast is going to take a while, it's not going to be easy. So I thank you all for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.